everyone, welcome to Connected, the bilingual space we use to connect with other people's realities, experiences, and lifestyles, people that find themselves anywhere in the world. My name is Fabiana Espinosa, and I will be guiding you through today's journey from Santa Cruz, Bolivia, in South America. I'd like to remind you that you do not only see us through the Abby Ayala channel, but you can also follow us through Facebook, Twitter, and later on when the show is over on our YouTube channel. Today's topic takes us to a world where drawing, shapes and colors are the foundation of a lifestyle. A lifestyle that honors not only the visible, but also the invisible. Have you heard about celestial art? If you had, stick around to meet a talented Egyptian artist. And if you have not, do not miss the chance to learn all about it. I invited Ahmed Fawad who will be connecting with us from Dahab, Egypt. Before we connect with Ahmed, let's meet him. On the year 2004, Ahmed Fuad graduated from the Fine Arts Alexandria University in Egypt. After graduating, Ahmed worked a 9 to 5 regular job and after 15 years of doing so, he decided to pursue his dream and passion. He started a hand drawing project titled Celestial Art. Inspired from nature and deep meditative states, Ahmed lets creativity flow through him to give birth to the most sophisticated, yet very simple, lines on paper that has recently brought a lot of attention. Today, he shares his work worldwide through exhibitions and virtual stores. It is my pleasure today to introduce Ahmed Fawad, who is talking to us all the way from Egypt. Ahmed, welcome to Connected and thank you for the time to, to, you took to spend with us. Let's go ahead with the first question. Please tell us, how did you lean towards the path of art? Did you have any influence? Uh, actually, I, I had a lot of members in my family that uh, they they are artists and i used to see a lot of art around me when i was a kid and from my dad and he he used to make some paintings for me to take it for the school and and this stuff so i i was really attracted to art since i was a kid and i wanted even to study art so yeah here we are so from an early age you knew that that was going to be your path Mm, not really, actually. <laughs> I was not planning to be an artist or to go in this kind of artistic journey. Uh, I, I was doing completely something else before and I just started to paint like four years ago. Tell us about that. Tell us about how was your life before you decided to dedicate yourself to art. My life was actually so boring. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I, 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 I consider it not a life. I, I see that I didn't really have a life before I started to do something myself or to start to use my creative side. Uh, I was doing, I was just living very normal life. I had a normal job in corporation. Uh, I used to go every day to work and come back and just very normal life. And I was not happy even with this kind of life. Right, but never you were able to have both, like to have your work and to continue to do art. Uh, I tried actually before I decided to quit my job, but it was really little hard because you know 
I, I, it's some kind of different energy. I, I couldn't merge this both creativity and this very ordinary and boring life together. You know, it was really hard. I, 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 I tried to do this, but it was really not working. So that's why I decided that I'm just going to do only what I want to do, not what I have to do. That was a brave move, I'm sure. And then tell us about, okay, so you said you decided to stop what, doing what you were doing on, on the work. You decided to stop that. And then how was the transition? What was your plan when you said, okay, I'm gonna quit and I'm gonna go back to art? Actually, it was not an easy decision to just quit uh, this job especially in our life today and everything happening in the world and I really had a very good job in the, I mean to all the people, not for myself, it, it was not good for me, but I mean good from the security side, uh, the side uh, right. or, or, or what security, I don't call it security, actually it, it's fake security, but uh, I had everything, I was, I, I had uh, like, uh, lifetime contract in petroleum company and I had a very good salary with insurance and everything was going really well financially so it was really hard to give up all this kind of uh, privilege and, and go start from zero so yeah I, I, it was really challenging but I enjoyed it and I am what I am today <laughs> <laughs> well, and tell us, okay, so how was, since you stopped drawing and you stopped doing art for 13 years, when you found yourself with time, with your mind fresh and said, okay, let's go back to it. How was that encounter with the art again? Uh, actually, it was like a message from the universe because I... It, it, it was a hard decision to just say I, I will go back to art because I was at this time already cannot do art. I, I was not able to draw, I was not able to paint, I was not able even to create every, anything in my mind on canvases or on paper or stuff like this. So uh, I, I had to start from the beginning to practice and, and, uh, and teach myself again how to do this. Wow. And uh, how long it took you before you said, okay, now I have a piece or I have something new or I have like a collection of drawings. How long, how, how long it took you? Basically, it takes like one year of practice every day, right. day and night, all day. So yeah, th this is when I really started to notice that there is uh, some improving and, and, and some things I'm, I'm starting to learn and, and I start to see progress from what I'm doing and that's why I got more excited and I wanted to go more and create more and explore more in this kind of creativity I found in myself. Right, and after seeing your drawings, tell us what is the celestial art? What is this type of art that you call it celestial or the art of flow? Well, Celestial Art was actually the very first name I started to call what I'm doing because it was, for me, something I, uh, I was receiving not from myself. I, I was really, it was really cl clear that it, it, it's not from my mind. I was receiving visions and, and not from here and, and it was mainly not from reality even, so it was mixed with imagination and visions I had in dreams or awake or something I see I got inspired by or from nature even uh, everything in, in nature is so inspiring to me from the trees and how the energy flow and, and, and this is how also came the word the art of flow because everything is flowing everything is moving even mm, I don't know how, how much percent but there is more than 90 percent moving around us and we, we cannot see it on our planet and outside 
at the universe also so that's why um, our earth is something comes from the heaven from the sky from the universe whatever <laughs> Yes, yes, I believe so. And actually, that's the that's the feeling you one get when look when we look at your art and all of the drawings and the colors. Like it's not something that you can say, "Oh, I remember I saw this somewhere." Because it's really not that way it works. It's really actually beautiful work that you do. So, Ahmed, tell us. All right. You went back to art and you started to creating and you uh, started working with celestial art. So when you decided to share with the audience, which ways did you took? Which path? Uh, actually, at the beginning, it was the easiest way to me uh, to share my art with the world through internet, through social media and this kind of platform that I, that I can share freely. And uh, I started to draw on my walls, on the room. I started to draw on my bags. I started to draw on my arm. I started to draw on everything around me. And, I, and then I started to draw on my friends' things. So I, I, it just <laughs> expanded from this point that uh, uh, I was exploring and I was just observing what's happening i was not planning even I, i'm just seeing things happening and opportunity comes out to me so i was using everything and and see the result and it, it was all excited to me so i keep going and create more that's awesome and then also looking at your pictures i saw that you have received a recognition what was that tell us about it please yeah, that, that was uh, my first time to attend the uh, art exhibition and uh, it, was, it, it was an opportunity also came out to me and uh, I, had, uh, I could display one of my paintings in international art show in Egypt, in Cairo mainly. And uh, they like my painting and they really appreciate what I'm doing. So they just gave me this kind of recognition to appreciate what I'm doing and, and, support, and support what I'm doing to, to keep on going. Right. Well, congratulations, because it has been, it's not a long path, actually. She, since you came back, it's been three years. And I feel like you have been successful already. So there is a long path to, to come your way. We're going to go to a really fast cut, Ahmed. Please hold. And people at home, don't go anywhere. We'll be right back. Stay tuned. Welcome back, connected people. We are still connected with Ahmed, who is talking to us all the way from Egypt. He's sharing with us his experience going back to the world of art to lighting his creativity back after being working 13 years in a different kind of job, let's say an office job. So his comeback actually has been successful and also for the audience it has been great because I've seen the comments you have on your pages and people are really enjoying it and liking it. So Ahmed, tell me, what is there any message behind celestial art is there anything you want to say to the public or to the audience or to yourself through your through your art to be honest uh, i don't like to limit what i'm doing in in, in in our languages or words or things like this i prefer to just create whatever comes to my mind and and, and let the audience connect to what I'm doing visually and and, and see what I can feel or, or or even sometimes it helps some people to connect the, to themselves already to remember something to recognize something to see something I, I didn't create uh, I mean sometimes I don't uh, I find some people tell me I see this I see this I felt this and it, it, it was not in purpose sometimes from me, you know, because I just let it flow, you know, whatever comes to my mind and I don't plan even my art. So uh, I cannot say that I have a real message from my art, 
because uh, I don't want to limit it by words, you know. I, I just want it to be naturally happen from the audience, you know. That's all. Right. And tell us about the feedback you get from the people that follows you. I have a lot actually, <laughs> because I mainly all this time I used to uh, share my art through internet. Mainly, uh, I, I was a lot in the ground, you know. I was doing, I was staying in my place and doing my art, and I'm sharing all the time. So, yeah, sometimes people really surprise me from the comments and. And, and what they felt or, or, or even how they appreciate what I'm doing and they support me and, and this is why I keep going because they really, I have a lot of people really supportive even they don't know me or even saw me before but they really see what I'm doing every day what I'm doing even in my life I have this kind of people and they're very nice and very supportive and I'm really appreciate for this kind of appreciation they do to me you know Right, right, it's important. And then also another thing that I'm curious about, how does Ahmed keep inspiring himself? What is, you know, I'm sure like all of us, you know, there are days that you wake up and your energy is really high and you know, things just come up to your mind and everything is great. But there are some other days when things don't, don't go that way really. So, what is it that you do? What do you have any um, do you have any habits, or do you have any things that you like to do in order to to keep your your spirits up? Yes, of course. This is something very important and good question. Uh, usually, mainly, I, I just try to connect to myself all the time to find my peace. Uh, my inner peace, I, I can find it through meditation, the normal, the very basic uh, meditation. Uh, I go to nature outside, I, I like to spend some time with myself. Uh, I, I learn how to spend time with myself actually because this is something I couldn't do before. This is, this kind of simple habits can really inspire me. I don't like to be around drama and things happening with problems or or news or this kind. I, I really keep myself very away from these things and, and it helped me a lot to connect myself and, and, and be myself and just let things to happen naturally. Right. Ahmed, to finalize the interview, what would you tell to the young people, or maybe not only young, what would you tell to the, to the people that, you know, like is probably in a, in, a, in a position that you were 13 years ago? That is probably, oh, maybe I have a family and I have to take care of this, or I have somebody sick or whatever responsibility and I have to do this job, but I really would like to do this other thing, which is what I love. So what would be your advice to them? Well, I, the first thing like everyone is saying all the time that do what you love. Uh, but actually this is not the point of just doing what I love because sometimes we lie on ourselves and say that we love something and we do it but actually don't have the choice. So we, we just say to ourselves and convince our minds that we love what we do. But uh, the truth is that sometimes we don't love what I'm doing. I used to say that I love my job and I feel so proud that I go there and sit in the office and, and people call me this and, and respect me because I am manager or this and stuff like this. But this is not really uh, was for me something I loved. But what I want to say is everyone needs to do something creative you know we we are as humans have this kind of creativity N naturally all of us i don't believe in something called gift that someone have gift and, and 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 some other doesn't have gift this is not true at all you know i didn't have gift i created my gift and, and this is very different things uh, no one comes have skills or gift 
but I, I, I have passion about something and I keep improving of what I actually want. The point is to to be to have in uh, to have in our life something to create, like music, like to innovate something, to, to uh, even to listen to music. Uh, th this kind of creative activities really mind to our self and appreciate ourselves and, and be able to see that we, we are able to do things not only to go to work every day or or to be or to have a lot of money or to be able to do this or travel this is not the the thing i call it success but we, we need to have this creative activity in our daily life every day that's that's the only thing I learned from my own experience through all this. And that is a great advice. Ahmed, thank you so much for the time that you took to spend with us. I'm gonna leave you a little time so you can um, greet the audience and also share your uh, social media information. Go ahead. Okay, now uh, you can follow me in Facebook or Instagram. I have my, my, my all, every, in all social media, my name is Ahmed Fouad R, and you can find it everywhere on Google or Instagram or Facebook or Minds or a lot of platforms and even my website, you can, I will be really grateful if you just see what I'm doing and, and follow what I'm doing and thank you so much for all, for all this. Thank you, Ahmed. A kiss until Egypt and always be well. Bye. After listening to Ahmed's life story, I can emphasize enough how important it is to be in tune with our passion, to live that experience. It might take time and it might be difficult, but it is important to have that time in our lives. The time when we do what we love the most, if you are living that moment right now, congratulations! And if you are not yet, don't give up. Continue to pursue it, make a plan, be patient, and it will happen for you too. I will come back in a week with a new topic and a new friend. Nominate a person you love, you admire, or somebody you would like to support by writing me an email to conectadosbolivia24 at gmail.com. Let's get in touch and let the world know about them. Stay connected and until next time with me. Goodbye.